What we're going to be going over here is job order costing, where we're going to be looking at the year-end manufacturing overhead adjustments that we're going to have to make for either under-allocated or over-allocated overhead that we used on these jobs. And we're going to look to, at two different alternative methods here that, uh, for the proration methods here, two different alternatives. So for our job order costing for the year here, we would have used normal costing, where this is for our overhead, we would have had an applied overhead rate here or a predetermined or a budgeted overhead rate that we used on these jobs. And now at the end of the year here, we have we know our actual overhead cost, so we can calculate our actual overhead rate. So we're going to have to make our accounting adjustments between our actual overhead that we have for the year here versus what we budgeted or what we applied on those jobs for the year here. So first for our calculations, so for our pro applied or our predetermined overhead rate, all we would do is take our total budgeted indirect costs here and divide them by the total budgeted direct labor hours. In this case, we're using direct labor hours. So that is going to give us, in this case, our total budgeted costs here were 800,000 and our total budgeted direct labor hours, 16,000 hours. So that gives us a $50 per hour overhead right here. So for every direct labor hour, we have to charge, uh, based on our budgeted amount here, $50 in overhead. Now for our actual indirect cost for the year here we have actually 688,800 actual direct labor hours 16,400. So that's going to give us a overhead rate here of $42 per hour. So you can see our budgeted amount here of $50 per hour here is is really over applying the um, overhead right here versus what our actual amount here is at $42 per hour. So for what we've applied here for, and looking at our year totals, looking at our applied versus our actual overhead, for our applied we would have taken the $50 per hour here, our budgeted amount, times, in this case we take the actual direct labor hours here, 16400 for the year here. So that gives us $820,000 worth of applied overhead or that's what we budgeted and that's what we used on our jobs for the year here. Now what our actual uh, overhead that we have is that $42 per, uh, per hour rate here times again the actual direct labor hours is 16,400 hours so that gives us an actual overhead here of 688,800. So you can see we're over allocated. We applied 820,000 versus the 688,800 the actual and we've over, uh, over allocated just between uh, over the difference here the difference is $131,200 so we've over allocated based on our budgeted or applied amount okay so now let's look at two alternatives for adjusting for these in this case it's the over allocation so we're going to have our first alternative here is going to base the, be based on the ending account balance that <clears throat> And we have to be, we don't know what the included overhead is here in these accounts here in this case. Let's just say we don't know what they are. It's based on the ending account balance in the accounts. In the accounts that we have to make the adjustments to would be the work in process, the finished goods, and our cost of goods sold. So what we do here for alternative one, based on our ending account balances, we just take we sum up whatever our ending balances in each of these accounts here. I've got them shown here. We just total them up here and we come up with a total amount for all three accounts here. In this case, the total amount is 2125000 So now we have to determine what percentage each of these different accounts represent of, of, of this total here. So for our work in process, we have the 50000 and these are the ending balances again here, and we take the 50000 divided by the total amount, 2125000 So work in process represents 2.35%. And then our finished goods here, that's 75,000 divided by total amount here. That represents 3.53%. And then our cost of goods sold, well, we have 2 million here, ending balance divided by the total amount here. And that represents 94.12%. So total, total amount we have here adds up to 100%. And that's based on what each of these accounts represent as far as a percentage of the total between them. Okay, and then for our proration, our overhead here, we just take uh, what we're going to allocate here between these accounts. We just take that over allocated amount, that $31,200 that we calculated here, times the percentage that each of these accounts represent. In this case, work and process, 2.35% times that over allocated amount here. So the proration amount here is 3000 
$3,083. So what we're saying is we're going to have to subtract that $3,083 here from the work in process account here in order that we bring bring it in line here. We bring our bring it in line with our actual cost. And then finished goods, same thing. Just take the percentage here, here 3.53% times that 131,200 and over allocated that gives us $4,631 and cost of goods sold, same thing here. 2 million times 94.12 or no, excuse me. Uh, 94.12% times 131,200 again, get gives us 123,485. So we're going to have to reduce our cost of goods by that amount and finished goods will have to be reduced by that amount. So total prorate, prorated overhead, that re, proration of our overhead here, it, everything adds up to 131,200. It was based off whatever our ending balance was in the account in each of these accounts based on the total amount. And then we take that percentage that was allocated for each of those accounts here times whatever. In this case, we have the over allocated amount, could have been an under allocated amount, whatever that is, that percentage times whatever it is for either over or under allocated, that gives you what you're going to have to adjust your uh, account by here for that, in this case, the over allocated overhead. All right, now for alternative two here. Now this is gonna be based on the allocated overhead that's included in each of those ending balances. And this is the case where for our work in process here, we know that our overhead that's included is 16,000 here. And for finished goods, we're gonna know that there's 31,000. And for cost of goods sold, we know there's 641,800. So that is the overhead that's included in each one of these ending balances. We have the same amount for both ending balances here for work in process for our, the case here, alternative two, our work in process, 50,000, finished goods, 70, 75,000, cost of goods, two, two million here is the same. It's the same between alternative one and alternative two. What we have in alternative two, this is where we know how much overhead is included in our total amount here for each of those accounts. So if you don't know that, if you can't, if that isn't known, then you have to use alternative one. But if you know this, this is the better way to go. But okay, we know what overhead is sitting in each one of those accounts. Now this is the case where we apply our proration. We know our actual, what we actually applied here was 820,000 or what, what we applied, excuse me, was 820,000 based on our budgeted amounts, but our actual amount here is 688,800. So just making the division here, you can see that we're over apply, our, what we've applied here is 119% greater than our actual. So the difference is really we're 19% over allocated. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna take whatever overhead we have sitting in each one of these accounts times 19%, and then we want to remove that or we want to, that's going to be our proration amount that we remove for. So for our work in process, we know we have $16,000 worth of overhead times our 19%, uh, our prorated percent here. That gives us $3,040. So you can go up here, look at, compare it to alternative one here was just based on the ending balance, 3083 there's versus 3,040 here. And then for our finished goods, well, we know we got 31,000 here in overhead. We take 19% of that, that gives us $5,890. Okay, we can compare that. It's a bit different here. When you come up here to the alternative one, finished goods here is $4,631. And then for our cost of goods, so again, 19% times what the overhead we have sitting here at the end, in the ending balance, 641,800 that's going to give us 121,900 that we have to remove compared to the 123,485 here for alternative one. Now, alternative two here is preferred because it's based on actual indirect cost. Just that's, that's the preferred alternative between alternative one here and alternative two. Okay, so you can see here, they're pretty close here when you come up with the amount that has to prorated or what in this case that was over allocated here that we have to take out of each of the accounts here. So let's just go up and this briefly go through these accounts and 
look at how we take them out. So again, for the proration method, we're going to spread that adjustment of under or over allocated overhead between the ending balance and the work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. So we'll just work off that, in, that ending balance that we had for alternative one. You do the same here for either alternative. But in either case here, your manufacturing overhead control account, it's sort of a special account here. You're going to have in your debits amounts here, that's where you got your indirect material used, indirect labor used, and other indirects. So that other indirects is what we're working with here. So what we, and, and all of them is what we work. But actual, the actual amount that we have would have debited in that manufacturing overhead control account is 688000 Eight hundred dollars, the actual amount, and then we would we have credited here what that was our applied over manufacturing overhead. That was at eight hundred and twenty thousand. We'd have credited here. So uh, the difference is that hundred and thirty one thousand two hundred here that were over allocated. Now what we've credited here, most of that would have flown into our inventory accounts here, and that's what we would have used. Some of it's still sitting in here, and that's the adjustment that we didn't have to make for. So for our work and process account here. Let's just look at it. If we just go through each one of those, let's just say we use that alternative one and we had that $3,083 that we had to make that adjustment to. So what we would have done, we would have credited our work and process for that amount. So our beginning balance here was sitting at 50,000. We have to subtract out or remove that $3,083 of over allocated overhead. So we ended up with an ending balance here, 46. $917. Now, had we used alternative two, would just whatever numbers we had here for work and process that was $3,040, we would have to subtract that out here. Okay, so that takes care of our work and process. Now, remember our work and process, uh, it would have been credited out here for cost of goods manufactured here and would have gone into the finished goods. And these are control accounts. All of these are control accounts. So they have uh, backup uh, information and all the subsidiary, in, sub subsidiary accounts. So that cost of goods manufacturing would have flown into here. And therefore, we got to remove whatever's sitting in our finished goods account. So whatever amount we had, in this case, uh, it, it was at $4,631 that we had to remove here for alternative one. So our beginning balance was 75000 Subtract out that amount here, 4631 So our ending balance is $70,369. OK, so that's finished goods. Now remember, we would have credited out our finished goods here and it would have gone into cost of goods sold here. Now, cost of goods sold is on our income statement. Again, we would have taken that amount here, What, uh, what I, the overhead that we have to, we calculated that we had to make that adjustment or we have to exclude it or remove it is $123,485. So what we would do is, again, we'd credited our cost of goods sold for that amount. So then for our, our balance here, before the adjustment, we had two million sitting in it. Subtract out the 123485 and you come up with $1,876,515 after it. So we've, uh, that's how we had to make this adjustment here. Now, in either case, uh, this proration was based on either a percentage of the uh, inventory or a percentage of the ending balance in the account here. And then based on whatever percentage that was, then we came up with that prorated amount. Or it was based on again, the percentage of overhead itself that was sitting in the account here. And then we had to come up with whatever amount. So we really had two different means of going at it. So uh, if, if you can come up, if you can determine what overhead is sitting in each one of these accounts, you can apply the proration method that way. And that's really the best alternative. But in either case here, the general rule is this, manufacturing overhead, if it's over allocated, the work in process, the finished goods and the cost of goods sold should be decreased or credited, which we did in all cases here. We decreased or credited for the amount that we are over allocated overhead for each one of these accounts based on some percentage. And the other, the reverse would be true here. If there, it was under allocated, then you would increase or debit those specific accounts, then you'd have to increase it or debit it. So what we mean by under allocated, if we go back to our manufacturing overhead, had we used 688,800 here for what we've applied here, and our actual amount was 820,000, then we would have to go in and make our adjustments 
in the same manner here, but we would have to debit each one of our accounts here, each one of those inventory based on what we had applied because we would have under applied it in that case. Okay, so that's pretty much the summary of what's going on here. So you really got two different methods here for uh, using that proration method here for taking uh, uh, either using under allocated or over allocated overhead in the adjustments that you have to make the, to the accounts. Just remember they involve this manufacturing overhead uh, account here, sort of a special account and it would involve our work and process, our finished goods, and also our gloss to goods sold. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion.